Well, good morning, everybody. It's Dave coming to you from the office here in the Wyoming house. I haven't done a video from here in the office in a while. This is sort of the business end of the trip. You can see my rabbit ear filter back there, and you can see my giant printer, and I got to keep the sun out. See my screens. So this is a... Uh, this is where I spend most of my mornings. I start my day in here. I do my day trading or my swing trading here. And it's just a nice time. Um, I used to have a pipe. I get a pipe and I've had a mug of coffee, but now I'm doing iced coffee. Um, I enjoy that in the summertime. So uh, the pipe I'm smoking is the probably now famous Wyoming Meerschaum. It's colored up real nice. It's colored up the entire stommel, I guess. I don't really know my parts that well, but it's colored all that real well. It's really colored. The bottom one was black now. And uh, really, just what's left is just this top ring. Anyway, colored up nicely. It's one of the better colored ones I've seen even on YouTube. So I enjoy smoking it. Right now, this morning, I'm smoking uh, C&D's Apricot and Cream. Prior for this week, I'd been earlier, the last few days, I've been doing uh, seeing these autumn evening. I've been on a kick to close up some. I have way too many open jars, too many open blends, so I'm on a kick to not open any more and just start getting some of these jars closed out. So last week, I spent the whole week smoking from beyond, and then when that was gone, I finished up autumn evening, and as you can see, I'm about one bowl away from finishing up the apricot and cream. So it's um it's nice. That's three three jars that I'll get out of this uh, Wyoming cellar. So let's see, I did a char light on this already, so I'm gonna give it a quick tamp. My gold version and my gray lighter. So apricot and cream is one of the few that actually crackles as you smoke it. I'm glad to be done with it. I don't think I'll buy any more apricots and cream. I don't really get apricots or cream in it. I basically just get sweet. And then about halfway through the bowl, the sweet leaves the bowl, and you just get sort of uh, not that great a taste, in my opinion. Yeah. I got to say the opposite for autumn evening. I really enjoyed autumn evening. I'll definitely keep that in the cellar. That uh, maple pancakey taste, um, I thought was pretty good. I enjoyed it and kind of stayed through me, stayed through most of the bowl with me. So I enjoyed that brand a lot more. Or blend. And uh, I found From Beyond to be pretty good too. I enjoyed that. I finished that tin up and. Um, I enjoyed that. I guess it's Latakia that you're tasting in it, but it's not a lat bomb in my opinion. Anyway, my mouth enjoyed it. So I'm kind of two for three. You know, from beyond, I'd give a thumbs up. Autumn evening, I'd give a thumbs up. And apricots and cream, I'd kind of give a sideways thumb. So how about that? We'll use the thumb meter for this review. So as you can see, I'm wearing my good guy hat. The Stetson straw, it's stiff. So it's a Stetson straw hat. Stetson, uh, you can tell the quality of the Stetson by the number of X's. A 10X Stetson straw is about as the highest quality you can get. There you see the Stetson, and then they put a little bow in the back so newbies don't wear the hat backwards. So this is a Stetson 10X white straw hat. It's way more comfortable to wear in the heat. <clears throat> the black one I wear is a 6X Beaver, which is the highest quality beaver that Stetson sells. And um, man, that in the heat, you start sweating in that hat really, really quick. So we have a boot barn here in Jackson. It's a really nice one. They've actually redone it. It looks, it's a beautiful store now. And, um, uh, they have a great hat section, as you would expect. So they have a great boot section and a great hat section. Um, so anyway, I think out the door price taxed and everything, this is 160 bucks. So it's, I consider it a pretty reasonable hat.
So I left Maryland two weeks ago, so I've been on the road now for two weeks. You know, the three-day trip to get here, and then I've been here. This is day 12 for me here in the on the Wyoming property. It's turned out to be a really good time to be here. I've missed the monster heat wave that went through the East Coast. It was hot here for a couple days. I mean, we hit high 90s for two or three days, but the rest... The rest of the time, it's been uh, mid-80s. The highs have been 83, 84, 85. And I have to say, the mornings and evenings have been great. We have 40 degree, 42 degree mornings, and then cool evenings by 9 o'clock or so. It's back to being cooled off. So it's just uh, it's been a great time to be here. I love summers up here in the Rockies. It's also been a great time to be up here because... You know, we live in a bizarre world. And so to watch the assassination attempt from here, the Biden press conference from here, Biden's dropping out from here. <clears throat> The Secret Service's directors grilling by Congress yesterday from here. <clears throat> so for me, it's a much healthier environment to watch the world burn. Maryland, there's so much emotion and anger from uh, from the left side. I mean, Maryland's 75% liberal, so it's a different state. here. Out here, the town of Jackson is fairly liberal, but the, the general population of Wyoming is by far are pretty hardcore right. And then all my buddies that come into the cigar shop, the regulars that sit down, the, the 10 or 12 guys I've become close to are all pretty right-leaning, pretty conservative. So it's just a much healthier environment for me to have conversations about what's going on in the world out here than, uh, than the people I have contact with in Maryland. With it being so warm, a lot of the wildlife have moved up higher into the mountains, even higher than here. I'm sitting at almost 8,000 feet in the Rockies when I sit in here and talk to you. We're about 1,000 feet higher than the town of Jackson itself. But in 11 days, I haven't seen a single moose or elk, coyote or fox on my property, and that's pretty rare. But I have seen a lot of his bison. They're about three, four miles from the house is um, what we call Antler Flats Ranch. And that flats is one of the favorite places for summer bison. And there's been a herd of five to six, maybe 700 bison out there every day. So I have to drive, literally drive through them on the way out, it's particularly on the way home in the evening. They're almost always on the road. So I'm going to stop here and put up a couple of minutes. It might be two or three minutes of buffalo video of them crossing the road. They came right in front of the truck yesterday, so that was pretty fun. So I'm going to stop here and put the buffalo video up. Yeah, guy's going to crash right in front of us, I guess. Bringing his family right in front of the truck. Big boy out there, that's for sure.
pretty amazing to get to see that every day. <clears throat> so I got to tell you a tour story. It's the best one I've ever heard. So I'm friends with the guy who runs the IT, all of the IT department for Grand Teton National Park. He comes in and sits down, Daryl's his name. And he was telling us a good story about a, some tourists had driven through some car barriers and all these signs that say no, you know, employees only, workers only, no tourists. I mean, they, they ignored all those, drove through the barriers and got themselves in front of the warehouse where all of this town is called Moose, Wyoming. And it's where they keep all the road gear and everything. All the equipment is stored in this and it's got a big sign on the front that says Moose Warehouse. And when the law enforcement rangers were called in because people were violating it, they went up and approached them. And they said, what are you doing? And they were staring at this warehouse and taking pictures of it. And they actually said to the rangers, well, we were hoping you could tell us what time you let them out. Mm -hmm. They actually thought that the equipment warehouse with Moose Warehouse is where we kept all the moose and let them out at. And they want to know what time we let the moose out every day. You know, the, I think the uh, rangers showed great restraint in not just shooting them and being done and cleaning up our gene pool. But anyway, I don't know if I'll ever have a better, what we call tour on, tourist morons, tour ons. I don't know if I'll have a better tour on story for you. I mean, there's always. We've had people drive into the hot springs. We've had people drive into, you know, the geysers this year and uh, the car gets submerged and they kill their family. We've had people petting the fluffy cows and getting killed by the bison, but that happens every year. I've never heard anyone crashing through the barriers so that they could find out what time we let the moose out of the moose warehouse. So just, uh, it's, it's insane what you see out here when, the, when it's tourist season. Enjoy my daily walks with uh, Sasha. She's growing up quick. She's gotten quite a bit stronger. You know, we go out for an hour, hour and a half run every day, and she gets to run on the sand, on the creek bed. She goes swimming every day. And then she comes down to the lounge with me. She goes on all my errands, and then she loves the lounge. As soon as I walk towards my boots to put them on, she freaks out and can't wait to get downtown. Everybody loves her. Everybody pets her. Everybody tries to give her treats. It's just a good experience for her. So it's been pretty fun. So I'll put a couple of Sasha videos up here as the end, and um, I'll say goodbye. I just want to touch base, say hi, to see what's going on. And um, I'll end this part of my video, and Sasha's videos will come up here. But, you know, we've seen some crazy, bizarre world stuff, but I have a feeling uh, it's just begun. I think the next five months from now all the way through the inauguration date we should see you know, even crazier. I think it's just getting started. So, you know, buckle in. Let's go for the ride and see where the world's taking us. All right, guys, that's it. I hope things are great for you, and I'll talk to you later. Bye, everybody. Here are the Tetons from the south end of our walk. It's amazing. I can zoom in on them, but this is what it looks like to my eye. Pretty cool. Still a little hazy, but not too bad. And actually, the camera seems to filter out some of the haze. So you get to see a fairly good shot. Just so good for her to be able to run at whatever speed she wants and wear herself out. She's definitely going after the sandpipers. No better way better way to wear this dog out though and make her a good behaving dog. Do all the training in the world you want, but you gotta run and run the energy out of them.